The stories I began to hear were incredible. My membership was relatively soft. I was never on the staff of Scientology. Nobody had told me that people were thrown off the ships, into the water, put into the chain lockers. I didn't know. In nine years, that's how secretive Scientology is. And it's the mentality that it creates in members. If a monk that was in a Catholic order left the monastery, and he went out and he went to the media, and he said, you know, when I was in that monastery, I was not able to talk to anybody. I was never able to see my family. I had to sleep on a bed of straw or on concrete. I got woken up seven times a night to say prayers. Do you think that if someone went out with those sort of allegations to the media, that anybody would give them even the time of day? If you're connected with somebody who is uh, against Scientology principles, you're required to disconnect from them. If you want to continue in Scientology, you have to disconnect from them. Disconnect means exactly what it sounds like. You can have no contact with the person. They can't, you don't let them call you, you don't let them write, you don't answer their letters. They are out of your life. If you have someone who is antagonistic to you and your objectives in life, and you are unable to get that person to stop being antagonistic towards doing that, then you have two choices. You either stop doing what you're doing that they are complaining about, or you don't pay any attention to what they're saying anymore, and you cut, cut off the line. I was required to disconnect from my brother, and I nearly disconnected from my parents. You know, people were living in misery they weren't getting what they were supposed to be getting, which was spiritual enlightenment. I never heard the, the word God used once in all of that time. I never saw a church service. All I ever did was see people worked into the ground to make money for Hubbard. And after a while, I just couldn't stomach it anymore. I had to leave. That's all you have to do in a cult is say, uh-uh, I'm not going to go along with it. And they got no use for you anymore. So 15 years later, I was shown the door. They came after me, and I could hear the motorcycles, because they have the motorcycles. They start out, and they came looking for me. I went to a, a home of somebody on the reservation. I just knocked at the door. I said, excuse me, but I, my car broke down over here. Do you mind if I just use your phone? I, I'll pay you, and I just had some money. I, I have to call, so I called my wife, and I called her, and I was crushed because she said they're here with me. Because by the time I got into the phone, they had gone out there and they had grabbed a hold of her and they had had her under guard and I knew I, could, they, I was trapped. They let me call a cab and I, and as I got out of the cab, there was one of the guards in one of the trucks behind me and he says, hi Vaughn. And I said, just get away from me and I made it into the motel. I knew they wouldn't try to physically drag me out. They didn't do that. It's always coercion. They smiled, everything's going to be fine, come on back etc. and so I was talked back in. And that's, that's why I make this comparison to the drug addict and the alcoholic. You know, yo, yeah, we'll talk about your alcohol problem. Here, have a drink. Let's talk about it. I had, I had uh, two children. My oldest and my youngest children were living with me. The oldest had signed a Sea Org contract at, at age nine. I said, do you, you know, we, do you want to stay or do you want to come with me? I'm leaving Scientology. She decided she wanted to stay, and it took her another year to get out of there, and she almost didn't. It gets inside people. It saturates people. Um, in a study of cults done by Conway and Siegelman in the U.S., they studied a thousand ex-cult members, and at the end, they said Scientology has the most debilitating set of rituals of any cult in America. They reckoned that recovery time, unassisted, for somebody who left Scientology, would average 12 and a half years. It's like getting on a boat, pushing off from shore, and not even knowing what's out there, and not even knowing if there's an edge of the world you might fall off. But all you know is I would rather die on the open seas and die a free man than die inside that organization with what I've come to see is, is just complete totalitarian mind control. Yeah, I mean, I made it through Vietnam. I've made it through more. I should have been dead years ago. If I go now, I go now. You know, but if I can do something to keep some, someone else from getting hurt, or someone else from being conned, someone else's life from being messed up by these creeps, I'm more than willing to do it. It's a small price to pay. That's the way I feel about it.
sometimes when you veer off the road to total freedom, uh, you can get back on. If you get off, you might get chewed up. If you stay on, you will get through it. You got to trust it. And if you freak out, oh, I don't, don't want to do this no more. I don't wanna... Things can happen. If one-tenth of what these people say goes on in Scientology, really did go on, there would be no Church of Scientology. This same small group of people, the ones that managed to get themselves into the media, the ones that go around, probably the ones that have contacted you and told you stories, those exact people are the people that have demanded tens, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars from the church to shut up. Now, if it really was true what they were saying, why would they be demanding money to stop? When investigative reports returns, the church in cyberspace.